I don't know why Australia is always playing catch up on matters of national security. It does us no credit and potentially it does us a heck of a lot of harm. Successive governments have dithered about the submarines that we desperately need. Go back to it. The Labor-Gillard government did nothing. The Abbott government, they got spooked into dumping the Japanese subs for some Franken-sub out of France. And the best subs decision over the last two decades? Hmm. It belongs to Scott Morrison, who decided to dump the Franken-subs and get nukes off the shelf. But nuclear submarines are not the be-all and end-all to our needs. They have superior range and abilities in many circumstances. But we still need some diesel electrics for the shallow water stealth missions in places like the South China Sea. Still, at least we are making some progress, so be thankful for that. But now we also need to fully embrace the nuclear revolution by allowing nuclear energy, and more importantly, creating a nuclear industry in this country. Frankly, both sides of politics have been pathetic on this. Labor doesn't want to touch it for fear of offending their comrades and the Marxist Greens, of course. This is despite nuclear being a much better choice for the climate than, say, toxic solar panels that they keep pushing. And the Liberals, they've got their own toxic inhabitants. They're green sort of Liberals who inhabit their party and they're too darn scared of even having the debate. The time to do that was when they were in government and reviewing the EPBC Act, because that's the act that prohibits nuclear power in this country. Suffice it to say, they didn't do it. But going further than nuclear power, I've got to ask, why don't we have nuclear weapons too? Realistically, we are never going to be able to repel any single invader, if it's China or anyone else from a number of other countries. And our major ally, the United States, well, their defence is cooking in a stew of Democrat juices, arguing over pronouns and gender rights. And they're also using an awful lot of money, munitions and other military equipment supplying the Ukrainians with an unhealthy leakage of their cash and arms to other corrupt nations across the world. And frankly, it's leaving America relatively weak. Sure, they'd likely spring to our defence if in need, but I'm not actually sure that would do too much for us in terms of winning the battle. More than half of the US's 469 military invention, interventions since 1798 have actually happened in the last 30 years, and the track record isn't actually that good. Afghanistan, mm, tick, that was a win for the Taliban. Iraq, Saddam is gone, but nothing much else has changed. And it's the same with Libya, Gaddafi's gone, but it's a lawless basket case country now. The Syrian regime is still standing. And going back a bit further, Vietnam, there was another notable loss. But it's not all bad news, though. I mean, the US did repel the barbarians from ISIS. And after a seven year battle, they also managed to beat the Lord's resistant army in Central Africa, driving its leader, Joseph Kony, whom you may recall was famous for an internet uh, campaign against him. He was driven into hiding. And the US even managed victory over the Somali pirates in the not too distant past. Most of the recent engagements though, have been more about control of resources or financially motivated rather than for nationalistic defensive purposes. In truth, the greatest military moment for the US was when it helped put a stop to World War II. How did it do that? Through the destructive use of nuclear weapons. And I think that's actually a good lesson for us. The best defensive shot we have is being able to guarantee the destruction of any country that tries to take us down. That's the blunt force deterrent that nuclear weapons provide. They aren't the answer to all our defense problems, but they go a long way to making sure our enemies think twice before trying to come ashore over here.